Hey YouTube, what's up? SR Arcade again. And back with another console related video today. And on uh, my last video I kind of alluded to the fact that I got a little surprise coming because the old Sony RGB hack TV is a... It's a thing of the past. I'm giving this away to a friend of mine who wants it. Because it was an unsuccessful project. Because I made way for this. I got an NEC XM29 monitor. And if uh, you're into classic gaming, console gaming, arcade gaming, uh, this is the monitor to have because it is just incredibly badass. It has everything you'd want, including a killer picture tube with uh, amazing scan lines and raster. I'm going to focus in a little bit on the ship and stuff. It would stop moving. I got guy, guy rays for uh, Mega Drive or Genesis. Phenomenal picture. Just so crisp and sharp. Best of the best. This is the monitor to have. So the story is, I've been after one of these for a while and I had some opportunity to buy it maybe one or two a while back and I skipped out thinking now. Nah. And then when I really wanted one I couldn't find one for a long time. And uh, I was bumming out because of the Sony. It just wasn't working right. So I really wanted to get a move on and getting something that worked good. So by luck, eBay last week, of all places, had one of these on sale for 99 bucks. It just went on like that day, like within a couple hours. There's already like six or seven watchers. And I said, screw it, buy it now. I just bought it. And I had some problems with it. But I read up on the problems. I thought, you know, I'm pretty good with monitors. I'm probably be able to fix it. So... Uh, you know, ninety nine dollars. That's that's a pretty good. That's about the going rate for these things. You know, and then it was about seventy five dollars to ship it. So I figure if I would have bought one locally, it would have cost me about a hundred dollars, and then would have had to pay gas to go pick it up, probably an hour or two away. Got some sync whiteout problems there, but uh, but uh, yeah. So it can turn out to be a good deal. And when I got this monitor, it had a problem. It said on the thing. Um, not all the colors work on RGB1, and it's true. I, I turned it on, and it's only blue. So I opened up the monitor, and it thing's a beast inside. There's probably six or seven circuit boards in there, and some of them are double-stacked, and just a ton of stuff and a huge power supply. So if you're thinking about dropping one of these in an arcade cabinet, just forget it, because it's like there's way too much stuff that's not mounted to anything but the case. So you can't really take the case off of it and it's insanely heavy it's uh, probably about 120 pounds so it's really heavy monitor much heavier than a regular arcade monitor so not a good replacement for the arcade but if you're console gaming this is the monitor to have so these originally were used for like uh you know av production uh you can see in the top of these cases up here there's little indentations that's because these are stackable you can actually stack another one on top of here and you can make a cube you can make what, what they call a video wall which used to be really popular in the 80s and the early 90s. Uh, you know, big functions and events had video walls. They had them at like the CES shows, AES, you know, before LCDs were uh, around, they did video walls. And you could link up uh, up to 20, some 21, 27 monitors, I think, in a row and uh, control them all over a PC and with a graphics processor and all that stuff. There's just, I was reading the manual, I and mean, this thing does amazing stuff. So, uh, not a lot of use for these anymore. Those pro AV companies are just getting rid of them and they're just letting them go super cheap. I, you know, so I've heard stories of people picking these up for like $20. You know, but 100 seems to be the going rate between gamers. And I have a feeling that these are going to get harder and harder to find because people are starting to pick up on how awesome they are. And they're going to start going up in price. So if you have the means to get one, absolutely do it. It is the ultimate CRT for gaming. Uh, this is a quad mode for all I know. Actually, it might even do... Actually, I think it's five mode because uh, this is, uh, you know, your 16K RGB, which is the same as you'd get on, um, you know, an arcade board. Uh, it does uh, 24K, I believe, mid-resolution. It'll do VGA at 640 by 480. It'll do 800 by 600, and it will do up to 1024 by 768. So... That's a slew of awesome resolutions to have. I mean, this is more than enough. You can hook a PC up to this and use a PC just fine with a big resolution like 1024 by 768. You know, that's a lot of uh, a lot of pixels to work with. It's not going to cram everything in the screen. And you're set to do VGA gaming, so you want to hook up your Naomi, your Dreamcast, 
your Xbox, you know, that stuff's going to look really killer on this TV. So I, I called it a TV. It's not a TV, it's a monitor. And um, I got the remote here. You've got to have the remote, okay? So if someone's trying to sell you one of these things and they don't have this remote, then it's pretty worthless because on this remote, let's see if I can focus. You got a D gauze, which is highly important. You got your selecting your video modes, but you can do that on the monitor itself. But you got your raster control, your width, your height, uh, side pin. It's like your pin cushion. Your position. Look at that. You can up, down, left, right. You can move the screen around just like that. Scan select, and then you got a preset. And then you have your different brightness, contrast, color, tint, sharpness. And it has volume because there's a built-in uh, speaker and amplifier on this thing too. You can do uh, external audio into it. So I'm going to give that a try. So, got to have the remote. If you don't have it, it's pretty worthless because you can't do any of that stuff on the TV. There's no buttons for it. And uh, you can check out this case. I mean, this thing's industrial. It is, it is still plastic, but it's a really hard, thick plastic. This is hardcore. And, you know, having these flat sides like this, you could tilt this thing up 90 degrees and play vertical shooters at full screen. So that's the other killer reason to have this. If you're a shooter fan, that's a must-have. Because, you know, if you try to tilt a monitor like this on its side, you know, it's, it's round. Yeah, that won't work. It's just going to fall over. So you got to have something like this. And sorry for the mess. This place is a total mess. This is my, like, spare, spare room or storage room. And it's just a mess of projects. I got the Mega Drive all busted open because I was working on some sync. Uh, I couldn't get this thing to sync up. Like, I put on the, uh, the Saturn. It looked fantastic. I put on the Sega. Uh, or the Mega Drive Genesis, and it just wouldn't sync up. It was all scrambled and stuff like that. And uh, let's see here. Oh, it's gonna be hard to turn this with like without holding the camera. Let's see if I can do this. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Watch this thing go falling on the ground or something, right? There we go. Move the whole shelf. Let's get in the back here. Let me get my flashlight check out what this thing's got. Okay, at the top, got some buttons to select the video mode, so you can you can modify this from the back. You can tell that was for the video wall. Hey, put it on this mode. You don't have to run around the front to the TV and select the mode. You can do it all from the back. Got some dip switches over there. Got like a D sub 15 port for VGA, or it's like your RGB one. That's the port that's got the problem right now. And I did open this chassis up and I did fix some bad traces. Somebody had like jammed on this really hard and there were some hairline cracks that broke some traces. Uh, R, um, R and G were broken and I fixed those but it didn't fi fix the problem yet so there's still some more to do. Um, it's got a loop back so you can come out. This is where you'd come out on the bottom to the next monitor if you were doing the loop up. You got your BNC RGB, that's what I'm using right here. And then, um, I, for my sync problem I was just telling you about, see these little switches down here? They got little dips below. Okay, these have, say, 75 ohms and high. Okay, I, I know you can't read that on there, but that's what these little black switches I'm pointing the light at. They're supposed to be on 75 ohms all the time. That's what the manual says. Unless it's a, a linked monitor, the linked monitors all say high, and then the master says 75 ohms. Well... I was just screwing around. I couldn't figure out why the sync wouldn't work, so I just flipped it on high, and boom, all of a sudden, I did high for the sync, and my uh, picture came up. So, whatever that, that does, uh, grounds something, or I don't know what it is, but it made it work. So, and I'm running my uh, BNCs down into this little board here. If you've ever seen one of these, this came out of a top skater. So, all the big rear projection uh, Sega games had these and um, if you can get one they're really handy to have and I kinda like hang on to this one and I thought it would be a good use and it's just all it does is take your uh, your RGB sync and ground out of your uh, out of your source runs it through uh, some coupling and some filtering and into your BNC so it's real clean and these are awesome because look at these are really heavy duty color coded and you got one wire per cable and it's shielded you know compare that to your your D sub 15 where you're cramming you know 15 wires into a cable roughly this size so I think this is kind of superior but I could be just making that up I don't know <laughs> 
I really don't know if it is or not. So yeah, this is the uh, the JAMA project, the uh, super gun I'm working on. It's it's up and running. I know it looks like a rat's nest. That's because it's like in development. And uh, I got my Altimark amp in there. Got my uh, my little test board on the front. You can see a little better there. JAMA harness. My Neo Geo controller port. I got one of them in there. And then I got a toggle switch to flip between RGB. Um, you can turn off RGB input and you can do, turn on amplified RGB. And I got my Power Pro. And you know, that's the back of it so far. And then I remote mounted my uh, power supply LEDs up here. And I still haven't gotten a pot. Well, I got a pot, I just haven't put it in yet. This is the pot that would normally be up there on a Power Pro. So you control the voltage up here. And then this little LCD display is going to be hooked up to an Arduino and I'm going to be able to see amperage, voltage, and also be able to do some uh, selecting because I'm going to be putting some more hardware in here. I'm going to put an SLG3000 and have uh, some HD output for doing it to modern TVs so you can get scan lines on modern TVs. I'll have all the dips selectable from the LCD. I'm going to put a couple little mini buttons down here and make it run through programs. So the idea is to make this like toggle this as possible. I would like to eventually eliminate like all toggle switches like that and just everything's controllable through uh, relays controlled by the Arduino. So that's the master plan but we'll see how far I get with that. So that's it so far. It's it's coming along and then the Genesis I was building a, I built a sink, sink stripper because I was about to give up. I couldn't figure out why this was not working so I just tossed a sink stripper in there but I didn't need it because I'm jumping over the sink right now and it's working. So, but that's it. That's the XM29 by NEC. And, you know, if you're also looking for these monitors, you can try Craigslist, uh, try medical monitor, professional monitor, broadcast monitor, um, media monitor. Uh, Sony PVM is the other professional line. Sony does more of the, the pro monitors for uh, broadcasting and medical uh, functions. But uh, this is more of a media monitor, uh, but made by NEC. And see that? I'm still not sure what that's about, but it's working 95%, so I'm pretty happy about that right now. And I just got to I gotta build my JAMA um, extension harness so I can hook up the Neo Geo and arcade boards and see how they work on here. But I got this two Sega consoles working, and they look pretty darn awesome. They're nice and bright. No problems like the last monitor. So this is getting to be a long video. I'll say goodbye, and uh, any questions or whatever, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll see you next time.